Let's get to the Donald Trump criminal case that uh, they finally have selected all 12 jurors today. They had gone through uh, like 190 different jurors trying to get a fair a fair panel. You could imagine that would be very difficult to do. Donald Trump was the president of the United States. Everybody knows who he is. Uh, and everybody pretty much had an opinion on him. And this was this this court case is happening in in Manhattan, which is heavily blue. So you could imagine very difficult trying to figure out how to place an unbiased panel of people into a jury. I don't even know if they fully succeeded in that, but they claim they have and they've sworn them in plus two alternates. So this case is if you're just for a refresher on this, the people of the state of New York versus Donald Trump. Uh, this is the case where it is criminal. This is the first time in history that a U.S. president has been indicted on criminal charges. This is what many are calling lawfare, meaning that this is they're just using the courts. They're using law to go after Trump politically. Many people are accusing the judge, the DA, you know, everybody being politically motivated in this case. And it's hard not to think that they are simply when you break down what the charges are and um, the, you know, we, when you look at the charges, so just as a refresher, we, we covered this a year ago when the charges came out and how ridiculous these charges actually are. Um, he is facing, Trump is facing 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. All of those 34 felony charges are relating to payments made to Stormy Daniels and Karen, Karen McDougal. So two women, there were about, they, they claimed there were three different payments made. Why 34 felony charges? Because each charge, every time something was done in relation to the payments, that counted as a charge. So a check was written. That's a charge. Uh, the, the payment was written down in a ledger. That's a charge. There was bookkeeping. That was a charge. Like any time anything was written down, tracing these payments made, you know, any sort of written information in a book for bookkeeping or uh, receipts or ledgers or checks written, every single one of those actions counted as a felony charge. So that's how they rack things up. That's how they intimidate people, right? It's like you might have committed one crime, but they're going to say everything you did leading up to that one crime is a crime in and of itself. And so therefore, they can throw the book at you, tell you you're going to face all of these years in jail, and they can get you to, they can get you to negotiate. That's typically why they do this. So it's an intimidation tactic. The problem with these falsifying business records, the, the, the problem with the, the counts, and we talked about this a year ago, is that um, in order for these to be felony, in, in order for each, each action, because you can give somebody payments, you can pay people off, that's, you know, you're allowed to do that. So you, you have to make it connected to a crime in order to say that this is a felony charge. You can't just have a felony charge without an underlying crime. Like writing something down on a ledger doesn't make it automatically a crime. It has to be connected to an actual crime. The problem is they don't have an actual crime. Um, they're, the, the, they're saying that what Trump should have done is used, instead of using his own personal money for these payments to these women, they're saying that he should have used campaign money um, because the reason why he paid these women off, they're asserting, which we could all dispute and say it's probably not true. There's definitely reasons to believe it's not true. But they're asserting that the reason he even paid these women was to shut them up before the election. He didn't want women coming out and saying, I slept with Donald Trump before the election. That's what they're claiming. However, it could have been just to hide this from his wife, right? Simple enough. Hide this from his children, hide this from his wife spare his family situation. That's also really believable, but they're claiming, no, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It has everything to do with the fact that he was running for president and he wanted to silence these women. And they're saying, so if you're going to silence women and it's, it's uh, something that has to do with a campaign, then what you need to do is use campaign, <laughs> campaign money. But of course, if you use campaign money, they would have gone after him for that. That would have been a crime. And so they're asking, they're saying, we're going after you for not committing a crime but we're claiming that what you're doing is a crime. Really, why? Well, we all know why, because this is really political, which is why one of the reasons I haven't really been following this case very much, and I'm sure you probably haven't either, because it's just another political prosecution targeting Donald Trump to keep him out of office. That's the intent. That's what we all know. We all know these are bogus charges. But the question is, are they going to get him this time? And the answer is, they might. They might. Because the people that are around this case seem to be so politically motivated, it's very difficult 
to not find politically motivated people in a blue place like Manhattan. These people are so politically motivated that they might just decide that the best course of action is to, is to well, they have. They've decided the best course of action is to, is to charge them, even though they don't have an underlying crime to those 34 ch- felony charges they're claiming. Um, and they found a jury, and the jury is from Manhattan, and they very well, even though they claim that they're not biased in any way, they very well could be. So we'll see how the jury ends up deciding on this case. One of the jurors that was dismissed says that Trump, uh, she was, now she's dismissed, so it doesn't matter. She was brand new American citizen. In fact, I think we have a, a photograph of this woman. This is who she is. She's, uh, she, she's a new American citizen. She says that she was surprised at how he didn't look orange. He looked yellow. <laughs> and she says that he didn't look angry. He just looks bored. So she says, he just looks really bored. They asked her, why were you dismissed? She wouldn't answer. She said it was for personal reasons, that she was dismissed because of a personal feeling that she has, a personal bias, but she would not elaborate on what that personal bias was, whether it be pro-Donald Trump or anti-Donald Trump or whatever. She refused to comment on that. Other jurors were dismissed for other uh, reasons, such as they felt intimidated by the press, and it was the liberal press that they felt intimidated by. Um, there's, a, you would imagine, a lot of pressure coming from the liberal press trying to get these jurors to find him guilty, find him guilty. You know, Democrats are going to be the ones most um, amped up to find find Donald Trump guilty. Um, one of the jurors, they brought her back in for questioning, and they said, or they brought them back in for questioning. We're not really supposed to know the genders or the identities or any descriptors of these jurors, but stuff leaks. Uh, brought him back in and asked, you know, about their political, they discovered that they had written a bunch of old posts on Facebook supporting Bernie Sanders. And that juror said, well, I was in a bad time of life. <laughs> that was, the re- I was going through a hard time. So I was really interested in Bernie Sanders. I thought that was kind of an interesting, um, you know, so there was a lot there. They've, they've had a difficult time finding jurors in this trial, but they apparently have, so now they've got the 12 seated. The whole Donald world Trump. is watching this hoax. Here, let's uh, You got a DA that's out of control? The whole world is watching this hoax. You got a DA that's out of control? You have a judge that's highly conflicted? The whole thing is a mess, and you have the leading candidate and leading crooked Joe Biden by a lot. He's the one that should be in trial. He's a crook. You got a crooked president. He should be in trial with all the stuff he's done in his family. He should be in trial. All right, so there's Donald Trump um, saying that everybody's crooked on this. I, It's hard not to think that they aren't considering that these, again, 34 counts don't have, they don't have any meat behind them because they're not connected to an actual crime. So that's the latest. We will be following this case now that it's, now that it's like up and going. We're going to follow the case and we're going to report on it here on the show and we'll see what happens in this. I mean, let's hope that we do have a fair jury. Let's hope that they uh, do the right thing, whatever that right thing might be. And and let's hope we get more information during this trial and we can then assess even for ourselves what we think the right thing is, even though we're not the ones on the jury. But um, yeah, that's the latest. It's happening. They're actually going after Donald Trump for criminal charges and we'll see how this pans out.